afternoon. It's Skyway at noon, and I'm Pastor Greg Brown coming to you from the sanctuary of Skyway Church in Goodyear, Arizona. And I pray that this is a good year for you wherever you are at, because this is truly a time, a new year, a new season that God is moving us into. As I've been teaching about the feast and talking about the feast in my Sunday sermons, my Skyway at Noon programs lately, I had a great email question that came to me uh, from somebody in our congregation, and he asked the question, he says, so if, if we're talking about the new year, why is the new year in the seventh month? That's a great question. No, you know, it'd be like us saying we're going to celebrate New Year in July in the Gregorian calendar. And of course, we don't do that. We, we have the new year with the new month uh, in the Gregorian calendar. It's called uh, January. And so I just want to take a little bit of time to answer that question because I love it when you search the scriptures to see if things be so. That's called that's what Paul said about the Bereans. He he commended the Bereans and he said, you know, the Bereans don't just believe everything they hear. They really if somebody's saying something, they examine the the statements in agreement with the scriptures to understand it. So I wanted to not only answer my friend's email uh, in person, which I did, but I really felt like that was a, a question other people might be having. And I wanted to take today's program to explain about the head of the year versus new year and what exactly does that mean? How does that work? Well, if you did not watch Tuesday's program, I want you to watch it because Tuesday's program, I, I told you that through the feast, the three feasts of the Lord in the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 23 explains that there are three times a year that God calls everybody to worship him, to bring offerings to him, to spend time with him because God is telling a story about his interaction with man. So if you didn't watch Tuesday's program, go and watch it as soon as you finish today's program. But now for today, I want us to talk about the seventh month the last month is when the last feast of the Lord takes place. And God says, I want you, everybody, to set aside time to come and worship me. And this time, it takes about two weeks. This is a long feast. And the interesting things about it's called the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Booths. And in this window of time, God is doing a whole lot with man, but it's the central theme is joy. The central theme is celebration. The central theme is harvest. And they are bringing their offerings to God saying, look, I've, throughout the year you have blessed me and I'm offering to you this offering. So if you were to do a uh, scriptural study of all the offerings of God, you would find that most of the offerings the people brought to God during this particular feast. So what is, what is all that saying to us today? And again, going back to my friend's question, he said, how come you're saying the new year is taking place in the seventh month? Let's just get into it right now. And before I finish, I believe you're going to come away with new revelation and new faith because God is speaking to you. The first thing is this. It is true, the new the, the first month in the Hebrew calendar is the month of Nisan. It takes place in our spring. And the word of God actually says about Nisan, it is the beginning of months. So God is not confused. And he says the beginning of months takes place in the spring. It takes place with Nisan. But let me reformat our language for a minute. Rather than just saying Rosh Hashanah is Happy New Year, Let's say Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year, which is a more biblical explanation for what's going on. Because Rosh Hashanah is the celebration of the sixth day of creation when God created Adam and Eve to know him, to obey him, to say, we love you because you love us and we're here to keep the earth we're here to have dominion over the animals. We're here to do the things you created us to do. All of these things took place when? On the sixth day of creation. And so God has called the anniversary of that sixth day, Rosh Hashanah, 
or really it is the head of the year. Say it out loud with me, head of the year, which is different than the new year. Is this starting to make sense? So the head, here's my head. When I was in Europe, uh, one guy said to me, you have a big American head. So my wife always has fun with me, talks about my big American head. So anyways, the head has preeminence over the entire body. Jesus is the head of what? The body of Christ. The head determines where you're going to go. The head determines what you believe. The head determines what you speak. The head sets the course for the entire body. And so Rosh Hashanah is the head of the year as we celebrate when God created man, you count the years and God tells a story. 5,781 years ago, God created mankind to know him, to walk with him, and decree, you are the most high God, creator of heaven and earth, and I bow to you. Say that with me. I bow to you. Wow, isn't that a powerful statement? And the head of the year is when you look and you spend time with God, and in these 10 days, it's called the 10 days of awe, you spend reflecting with God, saying, what are the things in my life that have not been fruitful, have not been productive? I want to get rid of these things. And what are the things, God, that you want me to apply my life to, uh, you know, to lay my hands to the plow, so to speak? What are the things that you want me to be about in this emerging year? The head of the year is this time to come aside with God for revelation, for direction, for reflection, for repentance, for giving away of the things that you want to get rid of. And it's also a time for sowing seeds that you want to reap a harvest in the entire year to come. So the head of the year is different than, quote, New Year's. The head of the year is the preeminence of your time to spend with God and reflect with God what does he want you to do for the next 12 months of your life on the Gregorian calendar. Does that make sense? And so what is that that God is saying? He's saying reflect and take the things that you don't want and put them at the foot of the cross. Reflect back and say, God, this stuff that's gone down in 2020 has caused bitterness inside of me. It's called anger inside of me. It's called all these, caused all these different emotions. I want to take all these things that I know that do not reflect your glory. They do not reflect your goodness. I want to lay it at the cross because Jesus is the true sacrifice that takes away all sin. On this Sunday, I'm going to talk about the Day of Atonement, and I'm going to show you in the Bible what atonement really means and how Jesus is the only one that can make us at one with God. Atonement. So at Rosh Hashanah, we take our things that we don't want. It's like you put them in a basket. And you have broken relationships. And you don't want to have broken relationships. And you, you just sinful habits, sinful attitudes, things you know that are not productive, things that have been destroying your body, things that have been destroying your relationships, things that have been just causing you depression and discouragement in your mind. Can you take all those things? The New Testament says take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And you put them in a basket, and you put them in the basket in front of Jesus, and you let go, and you bow to Jesus, and you say, Lord, I surrender to you, the creator of heaven and earth, all of these failures, all of the shame, all these negative things, and I step back away from them, and I see the glory of God, and I receive revelation from God into my head because you are my head. You are my preeminent being, and I receive your thoughts for me, your plans for me, your love for me, so that I can be on a path for this year that reflects your glory and that each year the Hebrews believe that you go through this circular cycle 
and you will advance beyond the failures where you failed in the past years, though they may try to pop up in this year, you will have new glory in your life to be able to advance beyond those things. They may come back, but you're going to be victorious over them this year. They may try to cause you to stumble, but you're not going to stumble this year. Why? Because you cycled to a higher place in Christ, and by the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the person of the Holy Spirit living in your life, you're going to be victorious over those things that had caused you to stumble in the last seasons of your life. Because in the Hebrew calendar, it circles. And have you ever seen circular staircases that lead up to something higher? And so it isn't just an elevator. You start on floor one and you go up. But with these circular uh, staircases, you just keep going in this circle. And by the time you get back to the same point, you're higher. But you're at the same point. You circle again and you're higher. You're at the next floor. And that's how the Hebrew calendar works. And that's how the timing of God works. Every year, he wants to take you on a journey with him and keep circling higher, breaking through the barriers. I have a book called The Seven, uh, Seven Laws of Breakthrough. And I, I teach you this principle in this book that every year that those things that were your ceiling, you will break through that ceiling. And in the next season, your old ceiling becomes your floor. Why? Because this is how God operates. And this is why I encourage you to take this time to reflect, to give away the things that you need to get rid of, to receive the revelation God wants you to receive, and then to begin to sow seeds for the harvest that you want. Sow financial seeds, sow seeds of kindness, sow seeds of caring. What are the things that you want to reap in your life? Sow those seeds. Take an inventory like a farmer and say, what are the seeds that I should be sowing this year? Because God has a plan for my life, and my plan is to have a great harvest. One year from now, I want to be up on that next staircase. I want to be higher, not lower. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be down lower and lower. No, God has taken me higher and higher than I've ever been before. Why? Because this is how God communes with me. This is how God meets with me. And he does it at the head of the year. And it's so amazing that Jesus was literally born at the head of the year. Christians should celebrate Christmas right now. And if Christians had been able to stay in time, one of the works of the Antichrist that Daniel says, it changes times and seasons. And one of the times and seasons that robbed the church was that when Constantine wanted all of Rome to be Christian, they didn't understand what the Hebrews were doing. Instead of causing Rome to move into time as the Hebrews practiced time, they created their own time, and they said to the Christians, Jesus was born on Hercules' birthday, which was the 25th of December. Well, why did he say that? Because they were already celebrating on the 25th of December, so he just put Jesus in with a celebration about Hercules, and took the church out of time. And so why do I spend so much time teaching these things to you? Because I'm trying to pull us back into time. I want us to get back into God's time. So as a Christian, I would celebrate the birth of Jesus at Rosh Hashanah, and I would be spending my time saying, Jesus, you are my head, you are the head of my body, you are the preeminent one in my life. All these things that's connected that I'm teaching you now Everybody who's a believer should be able to be doing this right now. And it puts you into God's timing so that your year ahead can be a year of success. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So I hope this has answered your questions about the new year. But rather than saying new year, let's say head of the year because we are recognizing Jesus as the head of our life. Now, if you've never done that before, I want you to do it with me right now. You have an opportunity because the Bible says today is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait every year for this feast or festival to be taking place. Every day is the day of salvation, my friend. And you can call upon the name of the Lord and to get into right time with God. Do it with me now, dear Jesus. Say these words, dear Jesus. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. 
I invite you into my life, and I ask you to be the Lord of my life and to make me a part of God's family. Take away all my sins. Give me your spirit and allow my life to walk in alignment with you. Oh, friends, if you've done that today, welcome to the family of God. Let us know about that because we want to give you some literature. If you are here in the Goodyear area, we want to baptize you and have you follow Jesus. Move into time with God as we celebrate the head of the year. Thank you for joining me today at Skyway at noon. I will see you on Sunday as we talk about the Day of Atonement. God bless you.